Now, with IPv4, peer to peer, people have made IP, uh, peer to peer work with IPv4. So, when you run Messenger and you do instant messaging, or you do a video conference with someone, or a telephone, you can have voice conversations with people peer to peer over the internet today over IPv4. And how does this work? The way it usually works is that it's actually using relays. Someone somewhere is hosting a server out on the main internet that both parties can reach. And then that server relays the traffic between the two parties. So, they, so although you're having a video conference with your friend, mm -hmm. in many cases that traffic is actually being relayed through a third party. And that's so it's not the, really peer-to-peer? -peer. It's not really peer-to-peer. -peer. Cool. And so the end user experience might be peer-to-peer, -peer, mm -hmm. but there's actually costs involved in this. Um, the, the, the software vendor often will have to host servers just mm -hmm. to handle these relays and so on. And this is really just to all get around the problems with IP addressing. So there's a lot of knock-on pro there's a lot of problems that get extrapolated because of, of the address crunch with IPv4. So there really is a need to move to IPv6. So as I said, in Vista, we have IPv6 running by default, and, and the stack will prefer it. So if you're in a local, just on a LAN, a local area network, um, mm -hmm. uh, each Vista system will automatically create its own link local IPv6 address. Hmm. It'll just assign itself one based off of the MAC address, which is a, a MAC address is just a, a every every network card has an embedded code called a MAC address, and so they they'll. IPv6 addresses will often use a part of the MAC address as part of their address to have uniqueness. So anyway, if you have two Vista systems on the same LAN um, and you just do a file share between them, you, you put in, a, a, let's say you just try accessing the name of the other system, mm -hmm. what will often be happening, in fact, the majority of the time, it will actually now be, be doing that file transfer using IPv6 instead of IPv4. Cool. Now, it becomes a little bit more complicated when you want to um, do a peer-to-peer -peer session with some, but with another system that's out on the internet. Um, so if I'm in my house and you're in your home mm -hmm. and we want to do a peer-to-peer -peer session, do a file transfer or something like this, um, it's, it's difficult to do with IPv6 because we're each connected to the IPv4 internet. So that IPv4 internet is a blocker to allow IPv6 connections going between our machines. Hmm. The, the great thing ab about Vista, however, is that we have some transition technologies that we've built into the operating system. Okay. Um, and one of the, the a key one is called Teredo. Yes. Let's talk about that. And so Teredo allows IPv6 traffic to be tunneled inside of IPv4. So this allows um, a two, two people, two parties in uh, connected to the IPv4 internet to still be able to do communication over IPv4. Um, so that, Teredo does do this tunneling, but to actually establish the peer-to-peer -peer sessions, we, Microsoft is hosting um, uh, Teredo servers on the internet. So we are hosting um, servers that act as rendezvous or handshake mechanisms for for each Teredo peer to find each other. And every Vista system is a Teredo peer as long as there is an application that's, uh, that, that is authorized to use Teredo on that system. Hmm. So I'll, I'll just draw a diagram. Please, please. So we'll have PCA, and this system is running, this is the Vista computer, and this is in uh, at one home, and it is connected to the internet. Internet, the IPv4, the IPv4 internet. Okay. And this is a NAT, an IPv4 NAT. And this system will have a, a NAT address, a 192.168.0.1. And there will have another system out here, another PC behind its NAT. And this is PCB. And it also has a 192.168.0.1. 
192.168.1.1. Now these addresses, they cannot reach each other because these are not actually routable IPv4 addresses. These are NATed addresses. And so how can these systems do a peer-to-peer -peer session? Uh, so the way Teredo would work is PC, this Vista PC, PCA, we have, we have Teredo servers out on the internet. So these are servers that Microsoft is hosting. PCA will send a packet out to the Teredo server saying, here I am. An IPv4 packet. It sends an IPv4 packet to this Teredo server saying, here I am. The Teredo server sends back another packet saying, I heard you. And the address that I see you talking to me at is 17.1.1.2. Because this Teredo server sees the address that this NAT has for their main internet. And so when this Teredo server tells PCA that, that the address that it sees is the 17.1.1.2, now this PC can construct a synthetic IPv6 address, and it will create a um, Teredo address, a big, long Teredo address, uh, 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 alphanumeric address, that encoded, it be, uh, begins with 2001, and all Teredo addresses always begin with 2001, and then it is encoded in that address. It does a, a, a translation of the IPv4 address of the NAT and the IPv4 address of the Teredo server. So that is all embedded in this Teredo address. Okay. So now if I give this Teredo, oh, and then on top of that, this PC will now forever keep sending keep alive packets to the Teredo server every 30 seconds. Um, so that, in other words, though, we're generating a lot more computer traffic. Yeah, they're pretty small packets. They're just 50 bytes. Okay. Um, but this isn't any different than what mo any normal um, IPv4 NAT traversal technology does today anyway. When you install Messenger, this is what it does. I mean, it, so if you think about it, when you install Microsoft Messenger today to be able to do peer-to-peer -peer transfers, when somebody wants to, it's just sitting there in the background all the time. Mm -hmm. And whenever somebody wants to talk with you, you get this little pop-up saying somebody wants to somebody wants to talk. Well, the way it keeps that that heartbeat open so that there's a channel to receive the information that somebody wants to talk with you, Messenger today constantly sends keep alives. That's what it does. Okay. So, so this is actually no different than what any other peer-to-peer -peer software does today. Okay. Um, uh, so it's not creating more overhead than you would have with with these other things. So PCA now is sending these constant keep alives to the Teredo server. Now. If PCB gets the Teredo address of PCA, um, PCB can talk with, with PCA now uh, directly over Teredo. And the way that would work is the, the stack, the network stack on PCB will automatically parse out the IPv4 address of the NAT it needs to talk with and, and the IPv4 address of the Teredo server from the Teredo address. Because as I said, the Teredo address encodes all of these other addresses inside of it. So this PC, PCB, now knows the, the, the IPv4 addresses to use. So PCB will, will immediately begin sending, uh, it will send a request to the Teredo server that PCA is talking to saying, I would like to talk with PCA. Um, the Teredo server now relays that message to PCA saying, that uh, PCB wants to talk with you, and here is the address of PCB. And, and now the PCA has the address of PCB, PCA begins sending keep alive, or we call these bubble packets, but it starts sending these bubble keep alive packets all the way to PCB. And that opens a port mapping now to mm. allow PCB to start sending traffic directly back there. Now, what, so now we have a peer-to-peer -peer session working, hmm. and over this session, this is where the IPv6 traffic starts becoming encapsulated inside of IPv4. So if it was a video conference call, we now have the video traffic going over IPv4, well, it's IPv6 going over IPv4. So this all seems very complicated, but from the end user perspective, this all just happens under the covers and it's automatic. Mm -hmm. from